Hi students, I want to talk to you about um, forests and how they can help fight climate change. Um, in this, in this um, tutorial, you're going to actually complete a graph worksheet after this. Um, and I wanted to do a little PowerPoint presentation to explain the graph a little bit better. So all living organisms actually do contain carbon. That's why to show their age, things are carbon dated. And when plants photosynthesize, they have to begin that process with carbon. Their leaves take up CO2 that we breathe out and other animals breathe out and our cars and um, things like that from the air. And then they turn it into forms of carbon that they can use. Um, sugar for food and other compounds that make up their stems, roots, and leaves. Some of that carbon gets used really quickly and is returned to the air as CO2. This is a process called respiration. So believe it or not, um, plants actually do respirate. They actually use um, some of their own um, sugars and give off CO2. I think it's kind of a myth that's around that um, plants do not generate CO2, but like at night, when they're not photosynthesizing to get their energy, they're actually respirating. So if, if you had a plant in your bedroom at night, it's actually competing with you for oxygen. But in the day, it gives you a lot more, more oxygen than it takes up at night. It actually uses barely any. Um, some carbon that isn't respired ends up stored in the trunk, roots, leaves, and it stays there keeping that oxygen or keeping that carbon out of the air. So because that carbon gets pulled out of the air and becomes part of the plant, um, it helps reduce the amount of CO2 that is keeping the um, heat trapped against the earth. Um, CO2 actually traps um, sunlight in against the earth causing what's called the greenhouse effect. So um, getting some of that out because of trees and other things that photosynthesize, it actually cools the earth a little bit. Um, when trees drop their branches and die, that carbon that has been stored in the trees then um, starts to break down. It doesn't usually go back up into the air. Instead, it becomes part of the soil in a process called decomposition. Um, a little bit of that does go into the air, but not much. Uh, the rest of it just ends up building in the forest floor over time and just becomes stored in the soil. Um, the next slide. So um, when as the same amount of carbon dioxide is getting pulled out of the atmosphere and put into the forest, as the, and that is the same amount as the forest is giving off. So the amount it's photosynthesizing um, matches the rate that it's decomposing and respirating. Then the NEE, which I believe stands for um, net, net ecosystem exchange, meaning um, the difference of the two, it's zero. If they're exactly identical, the amount of carbon dioxide coming out of the air is the same exact amount as going in the air, the total overall effect is zero. That's just the math of that. However, most of the time with a forest, it's actually pulling out a lot more carbon dioxide than it's actually putting in. And that is when the net ecosystem exchange that's when the NEE is actually a negative number because there's more carbon dioxide coming out of the sky than going in. So it's, it's, there's a negative number. And sometimes we associate negative numbers with bad things, but in this situation, it's a good thing to get some of that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. When there's not that much carbon dioxide being pulled out of the atmosphere, and there's a lot going back in, 
the NEE is positive. This is a bad situation. We wouldn't want this. We don't want more going into the atmosphere than is actually coming out. Um, so what's being done to study this, to see what's going on? Well, here's a scientist named Bill Munger who works um, with Harvard, and he has set up this tree to do long-term um, ecological research in what's called an eddy flux tower. And eddies, if you have had earth science, is basically like a puff of air. And so he has built these machines, these um, sensors, essentially, that detect carbon dioxide coming up from the trees and from the ground and carbon dioxide coming down from the sky. And every time there's a new puff of air, he gets a new reading on his sensors. Um, so it's pretty cool how he measures this. So here's his eddy flux tower. And it basically, you know, shows wind speed and, and can measure puffs of air coming up or down and see about the air coming off the forest, how much carbon dioxide's in it, and the air coming down from the sky, how much carbon dioxide it's using. So he set up this scientific experiment on how it works. So we're gonna go through some of the data from Bill today in this Data Nuggets lab. So what I want you to do to start um, this project is um, I want you to go through and I want you to read this background information. It's basically what I just told you, but it just gives it to you again um, and maybe in a better way. Sorry, my computer is having a problem there, but it's, it's, it's maybe giving it to you in another form. So that's sometimes helpful, but um, something important that it points out is um, a carbon source or a carbon sink. A carbon source is something that's generating a lot of carbon. So I am a carbon source <laughs> because I am exhaling carbon all day long. So I am a carbon source. If I have a dog, she's a carbon source. If I have a car, that is a source of carbon. If there happens to be a, um, a factory in my neighborhood, that would be a carbon source. Um, my house is a carbon source. It is just creating carbon. A carbon sink is actually something, it's, it's hard to think of it as a sink, but think about a big draining sink and how it just like sucks all the water down. A carbon sink is like one that's like sucking all the carbon down and pulling it out of the atmosphere. And so obviously, um, trees are a carbon sink. The ocean with all of its photosynthetic creatures is a carbon sink. Um, there's a lot of things that are carbon sinks. So you can answer this um, information here. And then is the net ecosystem exchange positive or negative? Remember it's negative if it's pulling, if it's a sink, so it's pulling carbon out, then it's gonna be negative. Um, so then what I want you to do is answer this question. Um, look at the question that they're trying to answer. Is the harvest forest a carbon source or a carbon sink? They want to see if the this Harvard forest is producing more carbon dioxide or is it getting rid of more carbon dioxide? Is it a carbon sink? And how has the net um, ecosystem exchange changed over time? So they have all this data from their cool eddy tower and it's all listed here. And here it asks you, what data will you graph to answer the question? Um, what is your independent variable? Well, your um, independent variable is your variable that really doesn't change. Um, it's pretty like locked in and regular, which in this case is your time. So your independent variable are all of these dates. So your, indiv in your independent variables are the years starting with 1992 and going to 2015. Your dependent variable 
is how it changed. I kind of think about it as, well, it depends. Every year it was different. So that is your dependent variable in this is how much carbon it was putting off. So your dependent variable is how much carbon um, went into the atmosphere. And you can see these were all negative numbers, which means the forest was getting rid of more carbon than it was putting out. Um, here, this is so nice for you. It's already graphed. And so here, um, I'd like you to connect the dots and I want you to go in and draw some arrows to describe some points that you see. So I don't care which points you pick, but pick a couple, maybe three, um, and draw an arrow and just write a sentence explaining what you see that year. Like, that. whoa, this was a really high year or this was a really low year. Remember that this is zero, so this would be a net of zero. So this means it had the same amount of um, carbon that it was taking in and putting out would be a zero year. So this dot is actually barely off of the zero. So actually one of our highest years of taking carbon out was right here, okay? So it's a little upside down, but um, the further away you get from this line going this way, um, the more carbon it's taking out. Like this dot was taking out between um, 100 and 200 um, carbon centimeters per year, okay? And this this year, was um, just about 600. So it was much higher here than it was here. Okay. So you're going to make a claim that answers the scientific question. Remember the question was up here. So I want you to answer this question. Is the harvest forest a carbon source or a carbon sink? And how has the net ecosystem changed over time? I want you to answer that here, and I'm not going to give you that answer. Um, what evidence was used to write your claim? So refer back to the table in the graph and explain to me why you think, you know, you answered the way you did. And then explain your reasoning and why the evidence supports your claims. Connect the data back to what you learned and about the process of photosynthesis, respiration, decomposition, and how that influences the forest. So kind of make a connection to photosynthesis and what we're learning. And then here, this is a step to push yourself a little bit further. Um, I want you to, science is an ongoing process. What new question do you think that they could study now? So if you were to go back and talk to Bill, what would what new research. He's been doing this research for like, what is this? Like almost 30 years. What would you say to Bill now of what would be a new question to ask? Um, if, if you don't have any ideas at all, I'm <laughs> thinking of the little guy on the Lego movie. Um, it's like, I have no ideas. Some of my thoughts on that um, is you could measure um, species of trees. Maybe there's patches of, of native trees and non-native trees. Which ones are, are a better carbon sink? Um, maybe you could um, measure like different parts of a hill going up the hill or down the hill. Does that make a difference on how much carbon it's taking out? You could test like young trees versus older trees, which ones are better carbon sinks. And there you're gonna write your independent variable and your dependent variable. Um, so make sure that you identify those. 
And for each variable, explain why you included it and how it could be measured. If you think of an, a, an idea and you're not sure what your independent and dependent variable are, feel free to email me.